Hey everyone, it's Nicole and today I'm here to do my December reading wrap up. Back in 2017 I wasn't very motivated to do that video and I even considered uh, mashing up the December reading wrap up and the January reading wrap up, but since I read quite a few books I think it's going to be a little bit too overwhelming for you and I'm going to do this two videos separately. From now on I'm also going to adopt a different style for these videos. I've seen people doing uh, from the lowest rated to the highest rated in their videos and I think it's very entertaining, so let's hope it's going to fit my channel well. The first book and the lowest rated book in December was Being Emily by Rachel Gold. I give it three stars. Being Emily is about a transgender girl named Emily who wants to start her transition but struggles to come out to her friends and family. I was very disappointed by this book though and I even feel featured it in my surprising and disappointing books of 2017 video. I don't think that Emily's girlfriend Claire needed a point of view. Through Claire we see a person who's ignorant but who's trying to learn and eventually become a better ally and a better partner. But in my opinion Claire's point of view wasn't dealt with well and a lot of things that she's been going through could be solved through dialogue. I was much more invested in Emily's point of view and her struggle because she was advertised as essentially the protagonist of the book, but when you come into this book it's basically two characters that both are important. And in my opinion it takes away from Emily's voice. Maybe it would have worked if Claire uh, was written better or if she wouldn't uh, be this repetitive all the time. Also a huge thing that I've had with this book is a constant change of pronouns. Emily mostly uses she, her uh, when she talks about herself in her point of view, but when she goes to school and other public places she has to answer to him or has. And that makes sense because she's not fully out, people don't know about her being transgender, and some people are dicks and they do not respect pronouns even when the person is out. But Claire herself, who is supposed to be her partner and a person who cares, constantly uses the wrong pronoun in her mind and it's present until the end of the book even after she realizes that the pronouns she makes sense much more. That's a writing choice that I didn't really understand. The next two books are all four-star books. I tried to put them in the low to high order but it's difficult because I enjoyed all of them. I've read a lot of graphic novels in February because I decided to treat myself. The first graphic novel was the first volume of Spell and Wheels by Kate Link and Megan Levers. It's about three women who are witches. They live in the same house and they're basically a coven. Uh, all of them have different powers. And uh, one day an ex-boyfriend of one of them enters their house and robs them from their shit. So they pop into a car and decide to uh, find this dude and to take their shit back. It is pretty cool, pretty diverse race and sexuality wise. I really enjoyed it. I think it's the only volume that is going to come out which is sad. I think we need more witchy media because witches are amazing. I also really want a, a witchy TV show because it's been a while since a good one came out. The next graphic novel I already talked about is Sunstone by Stepan Sajic. It is about uh, two women who are both into BDSM but mostly in theory. One of them is writing fiction that has to do a lot with the practice and the other one is just a big fun, she knows lots about lots, she collects a lot of gear and she had an experience with another dom, but she quickly realizes that she is also a dom and they are not compatible. But they start talking online about uh, the lifestyle, about things that they like and of course it quickly turns into 
casual conversations and one day they decide to meet and it turns out that they have a mind-blowing connection. So it's very much a romance where two people are into one hobby and in this case the hobby is BDSM. I really enjoyed the drawing style, I liked the story, I expected it to be very porny but even though it has explicit scenes, it is not done for the sake of turning you on. It is for the sake of showing the character's connection, which I really enjoyed. Though I will suggest you to not read it if you're not an adult. It's explicit in a way that it shows the drawings of genitalia and sexual practices. I finally caved and read two issues of Fence by C.S. Pickett. I love C.S. Pickett, she's a solid storyteller and I also think that they have a talent for showing interesting, complex, great characters. So I was very very excited about Fence. I didn't expect them to go into graphic novels at all because the last book that they wrote was a fantasy romance. And this is so much fun. It is about a boy whose father is a famous fencer, but he was born a bastard and uh, that man never cared for him. So he decided to show him that he can do it without him and he starts fencing as well. So it's very important for him to succeed and to show his father that he is strong and independent. But the problem is that fencing is a very expensive sport. You have to invest a lot of money into training and uh, we are shown all his struggles to the path of success. He signs up for a championship and he loses to a guy. Not only this guy is good at everything, he is also extremely smug about it. This graphic novel just gives me life. I think about the characters all the time. I'm very interested what's going to happen next. I have a lot of theories and I actually need more people to follow on Twitter that are into fans and talking about fans all the time because I don't see a lot of it in my timeline. Then I reread the first volume of The Wicked and the Divine by Kieran Gillian. I for some reason stopped reading it even though I really enjoyed it. It's about a bunch of uh, different gods that resurrect at certain uh, points in history. They have a few years to shine and then they die again. It is very cool. I really love the concept, I love the graphic style. In many reviews that I've seen people complain about it being a little bit too secretive, that they don't know what's happening, that nothing is explained. And I really love it about this series because why do you need everything explained? Are you a toddler? I also really enjoy mythology. I love googling all these gods and uh, figuring out who they are and what they represent. Also, it doesn't shy away from race and sexuality, which is always a plus in my book. And I just really love the story. I can't wait to continue with other volumes because I bought them, because it was the New Year's and, as I said, I wanted to treat myself. The next book is Far From Home by Laura Lee Brown. It is an FF romance book from Riptide. I think Riptide slowly becomes one of my favorite uh, publishing houses. They buy a lot of great romances. Everything that I've read from them so far I enjoyed. It is uh, the first book in the series that I already read a bunch of months ago. I thought this one is the second one. It's good that in romance series they are not tied together. So you can read uh, whatever book at whatever time. This one was as exciting as the one that I've read. It was her hometown girl, I think. It follows an Indian woman who wants to start her business in USA. She came to finish the university in uh, US, but then she stayed because she found a job there and after that she wanted to get her own thing started. And for it to happen she needs a green card. On one of the parties she starts talking uh, to another woman that she knows but they are not friends. And she shares the story and this woman tells her that she'll be glad to marry her 
just so she will have the green card. It somehow doesn't come off as a joke and after a few days they decide to meet and one of them suggested that they do get married. It was so much fun. I really enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed the storyline. The fake marriage trope is one of my favorites in romance. I think it was done very well. I also think that the Indian heritage was very well incorporated into this book because they wanted to get away with a small wedding. But since one of them is Indian and has a very traditional mother who wants a huge Indian wedding, they uh, couldn't get away with it and they had to play it up for the relatives. It also surprisingly discussed the sexuality. One of the characters in this book was on the ace spectrum. I think she was demisexual and she was figuring it out during this pretend relationship. Another great romance that I knew immediately I'm going to love is Illegal Contact by Santina herself. It's about a man named Gavin who is a part of a football team named the Barons. He gets suspended because he attacks another guy on the streets and because he can't get out of the house he needs an assistant. And after a bunch of interviews they choose Noah who doesn't really like football, didn't know who Gavin is, but terribly needs money. And they have such an electrifying relationship. Noah stands up for himself all the time and Gavin doesn't understand why this guy isn't listening to him because Gavin is the employer. It is a lot of fun, I really enjoyed it, I loved the dynamic, I loved the ending. I really, really enjoyed these two characters, I love their development. And I also have a special place in my heart for people that look scary but actually are pretty soft on the inside. And the last book and the book that I gave five stars in December was Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Melissa Bushardust. It is genius, it is a retelling of Snow White and in the center of the story is the uh, stepdaughter and the stepmother. It is a very powerful book because it discusses how women are pitted against each other by society and we see that the protagonist struggles to understand why she has to care for the mother that she never knew and uh, she has to resent the stepmother who raised her and who she loves. It's so good, it's something that I wanted to see in a Snow White retelling. It was perfectly executed. When I'm looking back at the start of the book, I realized that a lot of it was foreshadowing what's going to happen in the future. It also is a book that talks about all kinds of love, about platonic and romantic love. The Snow White character has a difficulty navigating her relationships with her family, but also she falls in love with another girl. It is such an exceptional retelling because it has a point and it reconstructs the original fairy tale to show you something that maybe you've been thinking about when you were reading this fairy tale, but most people don't. That's all the books that I read in December. I'm planning to do the January video soon because it's already February and I need to step up my game. All my social media is linked down below. Uh, you can also leave me a comment down below if you read any of those books and enjoyed them or didn't enjoy them for some reasons. And I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye!